Morning. How you doing? Hey, Brett. How are you? Doing good. Good, I gotta, man. I gotta ask right off the bat. Embarrassing, but am I pronouncing this right? Corcoran? That's right. All right. That's right. Yeah, Thank man. you, man. I'm glad. I'm glad you. I'm glad you said Corcoran. Every, everybody else um, messes it up, man. So you know, you're you're totally right. Well, I was like wondering, and I saw I listened to another interview earlier, and I didn't even oh, yeah. think the other guy said it right. I was like, are you? I don't know. <laughs> Probably did. There was just one. Yeah, there was just one interview uh, for my record, like one of the first interviews ever. He said my name wrong in the introduction when he was. Like before he even started talking to me, he said my name wrong. It, it was it was crazy. Then he said it wrong throughout the whole thing. I even corrected him, and he still said it wrong. I think so. he said it like two different ways, and I was like, "All right, I'm not gonna learn. I'm just gonna ask." Yeah, Corcoran. Nice yeah. candid Corcoran. start to the interview, but uh, yes, you know, did. it's nice to get that out of the way because I've been seeing your name written all like online for a while, but I haven't actually heard it. All I've heard is your music over the years since you know uh, the Mecca came out. Your, your yeah. album, which uh, I'm a big fan of, and and Thank then uh, this year I've really been blown away by uh, the new Kenny Garrett album that you're on. Um, you know, I love Kenny Garrett, I love the whole band he has assembled, but you and uh, Ronald Bruner on the drums are, are oh, locking man. it down, man. I love the sound you guys get so much. Thank it's you, such a Thank killer you. record. Thank you, man. Um, Appreciate that. Yeah, and it's just it's just an honor to be talking to you because you're a you're a real heavyweight man. I mean, you've got a real monster resume you're working with, and uh, it's it's just good one basis to another to get some knowledge from you. So I, I can't oh, wait to man, j- hey, man, jump into it. It's a pleasure, man. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I'm glad um glad we're able to do this, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so uh, I mean, so I mean, first off, I want to ask what's uh what's on the horizon right now like what are you working on do you have another album in the works do you, are you got any big projects with other artists that you're working on or are you just trying to relax um, a little yeah. bit after that well, Kenny Garrett album? well, it, well the, after Kenny's album came out I um you know that just came out in August and um I just had a baby girl um on September born on September 11th that's right congratulations so, um, thank you man so you know um so I've been pretty wrapped up um you know, with with fam with family stuff um, over the last you know over the last six weeks or so, um, but I am in the in the process of you know working on my next project. I I had started I went in the studio and um and laid down a couple of uh couple of songs for the new project right like in the uh, in the summertime. I, I did that. I just wanted to get started on it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna look to finish up my my project. You know, hopefully um, by by the spring, have it you know have it released in the springtime, um, kind of like a, um, a continuation with uh, with the quintet that I that I have uh, my main my main quintet with some other um, guest guest artists, um, hopefully to, to come in. You know, so I'm gonna be kind of you know just continuing my story. Um, you know, the first album was had a lot to do with my. Um, my journey from Washington D.C. to New York, um, which I've been here for 16 years, you know. But then uh, through fatherhood and you know and, and everything like that, you know, and you know d- different people, you know, different people kind of transitioning um, and over to the ancestral realm, you know. Like it's uh, my my whole life has um, has you know it's been a lot of it's been pretty eventful, you know, musically and, and personally. So you know this this next project that I'm working on is just gonna a continuation of um, of that, you know, of my story. So I'm gonna look to have that, look to have that out in the in the uh, fall, and um, you know, and then I have I have some touring, a lot of touring coming up um, with with Kenny, you know, um, still you know pushing pushing the new record, and um, then I'm gonna be doing a recording also with uh, Steve Teray um, coming up in the next next couple of months or so. You know, and uh, and everything else, man. It's always something happening. You know, yeah. it's always thank, thank goodness. You know, um, so I'm just kind of balancing, balancing the music and, and, and life. You know, life and family, man. So, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of good things going on. Yeah. No, I mean, sounds exciting, but it's I know finding a balance is tough. Mm-hmm. I was yeah. just uh, doing my other interview yesterday with uh, Bubby Lewis for this week. Mm. And he was, and we were talking about like finding a, a balance between things and having to sacrifice things. And I mean, mm-hmm. I'm sure it's a lot with uh, 
with you know the new addition to your family, but that's got to make it that much more worth it and oh, give you yeah. that much more oh, inspiration. It is. it is, man. So it's it's really um you know it's really inspiring, man. You know um just you know like having you know, my son is <laughs> my son is three and a half, and then. You know, then me and my wife, we did, we did our daughter is six weeks. So it's like, you know, it's like we moved out of having the baby, you know what I'm saying, into yeah. the college. And now we're like right back in it. And it's just like, wow, you know, and it's just, um, you know, it adds a lot, man. You know, I I, I talked to, talk to like some of my friends about it, you know, after, after I had my, my first child. And they were like, man, you, you know, you sound like. You sound different, and I was like, "Well, yeah, what do you mean I sound different?" You know, they said, "Man, you, you like you play with like more, um, kind of like more." I mean, I always play with purpose, but you know, it's when you're when you're a father and you're and you're dealing with a lot, you have to make your statements like right away when you play. So you know, it's like really um, being able to just it's inspiring to be able to put my life into the music, man. And I mean, that's what music for me is all about, man. It's about telling. You know, telling telling the story at that moment that exactly how you feel at that given moment. So you know, I'm I'm really uh, on cloud nine, even though I'm, I'm not sleeping much right now, but I'm still <laughs> on cloud nine. Um, you know, every time I every time I play, you know, and um, so fortunately there's a lot going on. Man. Yeah. So, so yeah. when it comes to like telling your story and getting the music across the way you want. You know, I know you you waited a long time to put out your first album, and you and you were you know you had a very fruitful career up to that point. Were there yeah. times where you were like, okay, I'm ready to record, like I want to put it out, and it, and it just didn't line up until then, or were you purposely waiting that long? Well, I, it's kind of a mix of both. You know, um, there were there were moments when I was like, all right, I could I could do a, I can do a record. You know, um, there was a moment like in 2000 and um, Let's see, like 2012, 2011, 2012. Um, when I first when I first joined Kenny's band, you know, and um, I was on the road a lot, and I mean I was already I was already touring and stuff before then. You know, I've been touring fresh out of high school, you know. Um, but uh, at that time, it was like I was touring a lot, so I was seeing a lot in other places, you know, going around the world, and that, and that kind of was giving me ideas. Okay, I'm seeing these different things. I'm starting to hear these th- hear this this music. And, um, you know, so I thought about doing it back then, you know, but then I was just on the road all the time and, um, and having these experiences. And, I, and then I thought to myself, I said, look, man, I, I'm already recording with, with, uh, other artists, you know, who, who have names, you know, so let me, let me go ahead and continue to develop and figure out exactly, you know, how I want to sound in the studio. You know what I mean? Like, and really be, you know, kind of like come into myself even more and then, life just started to happen and I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna just go ahead and um I'm gonna go ahead and, 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 and wait, you know, for for a second and then I got married and then my son came in, you know, my son was born and I and I recorded during that pro- you know, right before he he came in. And I released it like a, like two weeks after he was born. And I was just like, you know, I wanna make sure I took my time. I decided to, I decided after two thousand twelve just to take my time because I really wanted to, my first project, you know, I wanted to be able to listen to it, you know, and, and be pleased with it, you know, years from, years from now, like, 20 years from now, I want to be able to go back and listen to it and be like, man, that was a great, you know, that was a great first project and not necessarily cringe. Yeah. And, you know, it, it worked out because I, I mean, I had opportunities, you know, I had opportunities, but I, I was never really, um, my story was still kind of coming together, at least the, the starting point of me really, really, being, um, I mean, I, I, I waited till I was in my thirties to record it, but, but, you know, really being a man and really having some, some, some things behind me to really, um, to really speak on, you know? Um, and so, you know, I, I, I think I, yeah, I just decided to wait and, you know, it worked out. And so yeah, those were like all the reasons, the reasons why. You yeah. Know, just, uh, yeah. I, think, yeah man. I mean, I, yeah, I go through the same kind of thing and, you know, I'm still, young and I don't want to rush myself but even when I'm in that mood where I'm like oh I just want to I just want to work on a project of some sort I always get sidetracked mm-hmm. with gigs and everything and it's hard to get to but I what I end up thinking yeah. is you know I just gotta let myself develop and I you know I feel like I've, I've talked about you know people I've had in my groups before where I'm like you know I think I want to record soon and then I feel like a chump like a year passes and I've, I've just been like buried in other work and I don't even get around to it 
So yeah. I just try to talk about it less until I'm ready to really do it, you know? Right, um, right, right. And I only hope that I can get something as authentic as what you're doing by the time I'm ready. But, uh, oh, yeah, man. You will, man. I mean, <laughs> you will. You'll know. You know what I'm saying? Like, you'll, you'll know when when the, when the time is right. And you're like, okay, boom. Because the thing that really happened to me was, I mean, I was working with, like, five different bands at one time, you know, between, yeah. like, 2010 and 2018, you know. And so, I, like, I, I wasn't on the road with Kenny. I was on the road, you know, with, with Steve Teray or Javon Jackson or, um, you know, doing stuff with, Older folks, you know, um, Benny Golson, you know, like, like, uh, you know, pioneers and stuff like that. So I was just like gathering all this information, and I was just like, yo, man, like, like, yo, let me not, let me not rush this. Let me take all of this in because I know the more I take in, the, the, the I'll just know when it, when the time is right, you know. And it's like you, you'll, you'll, you'll know, yeah, you know, you'll know when it's right. Yeah, I mean, and and I feel like I still have a lot of of learning to do because I only just got my first apartment in New York City, and oh, okay. um, okay. it's it's intense. You know, I'm from upstate New York, and it's a it's a okay. it's a whole okay. different yeah. scene. You know, it's it's funny uh, listening to you talk about your album, The Mecca, and why mm-hmm. you called it that because I've always described New York City as a sort of mecca. Where it's like it's like yeah I you know I love a lot of different styles of music I, I you know I guess I'm like mostly like a funk player I'm more of an electric bassist than an upright bassist but I do love improvised music you know what you right. know we call jazz or Black American music or whatever right. you want to call it in the grand scheme of mm-hmm. of uh, just the, the different styles that exist down there and I know yeah. that I'm I still have a lot of uh, butt kicking to get. You know, I, I need to go down there and learn more, and I'm, I'm only just getting to that point. And so I was curious to know, like, what was it like for you when you first arrived? How, like, was it intimidating? Did you feel ready? Did you get, uh, did you, like, have any train wreck situations at a jam session or something? Um, let's see. Well, I, my, train, my train wreck situations happened before I got here. So, like, I was fortunate, I was fortunate enough um, to have some connections to New York while I was still in, in D.C. You know, um, when I was in college in, like, tw- 2000, 2002, my teacher subbed me to a gig with Curtis Fuller at Blue Valley in D.C. So I was able to meet Wallace Roney, um, Javon Jackson, uh, Jimmy Cobb. Um, you know, th- like like these these amazing musicians that were... You know they were historic, yeah. and and we're all we're in New York. So I went, and then from that gig, I was still in, in college, and I was still in D.C. But when they were, when people were coming to D.C. through this uh, to this particular manager, he would put me on these gigs, like with Steve Teray, Wycliffe Gordon. So I was meeting all these people. So by the time I came into New York in 2005, I went to Queens College um, for my master's, and. Um, and I and I immediately just started hitting up everybody that I had met before I had gotten there. You know, I immediately started hitting up all of these guys um, that I that I met before I had gotten there. And and fortunately, uh, Michael Mossman and Antonio Hart were um, overseeing the, the program at, at Queens College, and Jimmy Heath was there, so they introduced me to Jimmy Heath. So it was like everything. I don't know. The stars kind of just aligned. You know, um, I did. There were moments. Like, there was one jam session at Dizzy's. I remember um, I was playing with, like, Rodney Green and um, I forgot who the piano player was. Oh, Adam Adam Birnbaum. And um, the gig was all right, but it was, it was, like, a lot of odd meter stuff. So it was, like, music that I wasn't familiar with. And I, like, I kind of, like, bombed. And, they, and like, it just turned into a jam session. They played, like, uh, Upper Manhattan Medical uh, Group. And I didn't know that song, so I kind of, like, Probably nobody remembers this, but I like totally bombed that song, so it was like really embarrassing. So that was like that was like one moment where I was like, all right, I'm playing with all of these these other people playing their music, but now I need to also get in touch with my peers as well. So you know, I was I was playing with historic you know players, but then I was I um, was able to tie in and start playing with my peers. You know, hitting at Smalls and uh, you know Smalls Fat Cat. Um, you know the Dizzy Jam session back back when it when you know when that was happening. You know New York was it was still really um really cool during that time. So I mean it was for me it was a it was a pretty good a pretty good transition, man. You know I, I chose a day to move to New York that I had a gig in New York. Yeah. So 
you know, and I, I remember a buddy of mine in D.C. was like, yo, man, just move to New York on that day. You know, and that way you'll be playing and you'll meet people at that gig. And then, you know, you're going to have another gig. And I was like, okay. So I moved <laughs> I moved to New York that day. I had a gig, at, a small gig at Dizzy's um, with a vibraphonist. And, and it just, you know, everything just started coming together, man. I, I was blessed in that in that regard, man. Yeah, I mean, knowing Curtis Fuller already, you said, yeah, your first big gig yeah. with Curtis Fuller. That's that's a nice starting point. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah, that was a blessing, man. That it kind of kind of put me in the right the right mindset and it inspired me, man. You know, it inspired me to to just um, you know playing with with all these people that I was listening to in my dorm room. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. so it was it was it was it was slick, man. So the transition to New York was was good for me, man. It's good for me, you know, um, and it just gets, you know, it got better and better. Yeah. You know? Do you have any other uh, particular advice for, like, the young players who are just getting into the scene, who don't really know anybody, who are trying to make the right yeah. impression at, at, you know, shows and jam sessions? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would say to all young players, man, you know, and, and this, is, this is very, very important. For me, I came to New York to seek out the information. You know, to get the information from from older musicians, um, you know, people that were experienced, you know, elders. You know, I, of course, we've lost so many, you know, um, since I since I first came. But I didn't come to New York necessarily to play with my peers and to be, you know, um, fall into a clique and just uh, show up to jam, at the jam session and just want to play. You know what I'm saying? It's it's more to it than that. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's about it's about seeking out that information, going to listen to your heroes, you know what I'm saying, going to listen as a bass player, going to check out Ron Carter, you know, going to, go, speaking to him, you know what I'm saying, um, getting some, trying to get some information from him, Buster Williams, you know, um, you know, older, you know, o- older, older musicians, you know, um, even, and then, even people in your, in your age bracket, you know, you'll come to, to play with them, but this, this music, this music is about um, it's about history, and it's and it's about knowing that, and it's about gaining that knowledge and that information. So I would say to you know the young people, you know, seek out that information. Go listen. Go listen. Do a lot more listening than trying to just jump up and play right away. Because when you when you get up and play, you want to have something. You want to have something to say. Yeah. I mean, and 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 in New York City. You have all of these schools, so you have thousands and thousands of young, young jazz students coming here to study, you know, the, you know, study the, the music in the institution. You know what I'm saying? So you know, everybody kind of knows what to play over top of a certain chord, or you know, the theory behind it. But you gotta, you gotta really, really take in, um, take in the energy and the vibe, and, and, and get it from from those that have come before you. So then that then that'll just bring you to a whole nother level. Now, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Now as a as a bass player, yeah. um you know, I want to talk a little bit about like your philosophy on the role of the bass and I mean a lot of people mm-hmm. say like, oh, you know, the money maker is just playing uh, you know, in half position or, or they like, just up on the upper part of the neck, not not going up mm-hmm. high. And and uh-huh. I mean how much would you say uh it's required of you to be minimalistic and reserved and only focus on, on simplicity. And, and how much would you say there's like a need to kind of be prepared to stretch out and react and, and, and not be afraid to, you know, bring the energy up a notch in the role of the base. Would you say that you well, kind of have to, you have to stay in that role or it's really all about what's happening in the, the moment. I mean, it's all about what's happening in the moment. You know, you gotta be prepared to, to have those moments to really, to really show what you could do creatively, but as a bass player, your your job is to is to make everything feel good. You're the foundation, you know what I'm saying. So it's like you gotta be you gotta be a solid, you know, a solid ensemble minded bassist. And then when you get the when you get the opportunity, you know what I'm saying, to take a to take a solo or um, be creative rhythmically or change things up, you know, throughout throughout doing it the act of doing it and the act of understanding fundamentally what you're supposed to do, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll gain, you'll know those moments when to pull certain things out. You know what I'm saying? But people, 
people want to play play with bass players that make it that make you feel good, regardless of what genre of music it is. Yeah. You know, you can think you know you can think about any any genre of music. You know, you're you're the the glue that's holding everything together. You know, um, me personally, I love. I mean, I love to I love the solo. I love the solo, but but I also love to. I love to make it to make it feel good. I love to lock everything together and and and, um, and and support. I love to support all of the all the musicians that that I'm playing with because that's you know that's my job. And yeah, that's that is what's gonna get people to call you, man. Like you know when you make it when you're making it feel good, it's like oh man, okay, yeah, oh, uh, this this feels great. I'm gonna. You know, I want it to feel great all the time. You know, that's what everybody wants it to feel good. And then when it comes time for you to to, to be creative and take a solo, oh, wow. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Okay, he, he or she is, is, can get all over, you know, knows the instrument very well. You know, know your instrument, know how to how to play your instrument, but also you got to know how to listen. And you got to know, you got to know what to do at the right moment because that's, that, that is what, what it's all about. Know how to have a conversation. Yeah. And how to allow and allow the musicians that you're playing with to communicate with you and with each other. And in order for them to do that, you gotta be setting that foundation underneath. Now, early on as a bassist, were there ever yeah. any like ideas of what you thought you were supposed to do that kind of box you in or held you back that you eventually realized you should get rid of? Like, was there anything you were doing where you were kind of holding yourself back from maybe the more exploratory parts of the improvisation for the sake of trying to be foundational? Um, I mean, yeah, may, well, maybe maybe a little bit. Maybe, like, uh, I guess an example would be on, on like, a tune where, um, you know, where there's, where there's no, you're not, you're not swinging, you know what I'm saying? You're not swinging, and you, there's no, of course, there's no bass line uh, written there. You know what I'm saying, um, and maybe you're in like a, a odd meter sort of sort of situation, or or you're just playing more in a floaty, you know, a floaty side, sort of sound. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, I I think you just the act of listening helped me. I can't say there's anything that really really held me back because I'm a listener. You know what I'm saying? Like I listen. If I gotta play something. You know, I'm going to listen to it. But, I mean, there were situations where I've gotten, I mean, I've gotten better. You know, I've gotten better at hearing, you know, seven or, or nine. You know, just hearing it. Yeah. You know, I need to start hearing it and feeling it so it's more natural. You know, being able to find the pocket within that. So, I mean, but that comes from, from checking out different types of music and different types of, and, and having to play different types of music. So, I don't, I wouldn't say this, that being, you know, like being more of a foundational sort of, of or ensemble-minded bass player has held me back. That's only allowed me to um, keep my ears open. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and if I'm listening, then, like I just said before, then I'll know what to do when that when that time, when that moment comes. You know what I mean? Um, I just think it's all about listening. If, I, if, if you're a young bassist, you just have to be listening to all different types of music. And if you're going to go play with somebody... And you're playing somebody's music, you know. Please check check their music and their vibe out yeah. first before you before you show up. You know, and really really take a listen to it because then that's just gonna make it um, it's gonna make it easier. So you'll know you'll know what to do in the moment. You know, is that you know? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's basically what it is, man. I mean, listening, you know, but knowing your instrument, but you, but you got you, you still gotta be. Um, be the stuff that binds it together. You got to know. I, okay, so I think one thing. I think one thing that young, young, young bass players may not know is like uh, when to go to four. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you're if you're in a two field, you know what I'm saying. But uh, when to go to four? Um, when to lay out? You know when uh, in a situation. You know, for example, playing with Kenny Garrett or something like that, um, or a horn player who's stretching so hard, and eventually you're playing, you're playing, and then you just got to know that moment how to set things up, you know what I'm saying? Like, like sometimes I'll have to, like, set up a moment. If I'm playing, I'm like, okay, this isn't really going anywhere. I know what's going to get it to go somewhere. If I just stop playing, if I set it up, stop playing, and then let, let him go with the drummer, you know what I'm saying, then something else will be created. And then knowing when to come back in to have an impact to bring it to, 
to bring it back together. Like, oh, wow, okay, wow, how do they know the moment to do that? You know, that's just, all of this has to do with listening. Yeah. All of this has to do with listening. And that, and that all still goes back to checking out, you know, those who came before us so that we, so that we know, and we know those records and those, you know, those moments when to do it. When I was in college, I, w- I would listen to music so much that I felt like I had a personal relationship, you know, um, with, with John Coltrane, you know, with Blue Mitchell, with Clifford Brown, you know, with, with Oscar Pettiford, with Paul Chambers, with Stanley Clark, you know, with, um, you know, you, you name it, Ray Brown, you know, it's just like you hear it, you hear the first note, and you know who it is because they're speaking to you. Yeah. And so you just, as a bass player, you're, you don't, you got to just understand those records, like uh, those Wayne Shorter records, Soothsayer, um, Night Dreamer, you know, those, those sorts of, those sorts of ensemble, you know, like when, when the bassist is playing, like you're really in an ensemble minded sort of thing, you know, um, situation, you listen to that and then that's automatically just going to like help you know what to do in, in all of these different situations on the bandstand, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it goes right back to, uh, I mean, I'm sure that's kind of what Kenny's trying to get across in his album, Sounds from the Ancestors. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. he's paying homage to yeah. to the history, and, and that's, you know, I think that's an important part. That's part of what I love about it is the history mm-hmm. behind it. I mean, I love that in uh, the history of, you know, improvised black American music. I love that in, in hip-hop. I love the hip, seeing the history and hearing where things came from. So it's mm-hmm. uh, it can be hard to do, but I appreciate it. A little more perspective on it because as because i'm still working on it you know right um, right it's a but, lifelong journey man <laughs> yeah. you know it's a lifelong journey but uh you know, back to uh <laughs> kenny how did you get hooked up with him originally and how did you end up meeting him well i met him um when i was in college uh, about 2002 i guess 2002 2003 i went to hear him play at blue valley me and a buddy of mine drove in um, from, from Virginia, from school, went to go check him out. Um, I introduced myself to him. Um, I told him I'm a bass player. He said, oh, yeah? He said, really? He said, can you play? I was like, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> and so he said, well, meet me, at, meet me here at the club tomorrow uh, at noon. And I said, okay. So I, I showed up, me and, my, me and my buddy trumpet player, um, Ashton Parker from New Orleans. He lives down in New Orleans. We showed up and... Um, Kenny didn't have his horn, you know, he was listening to like Japanese on a, on a Walkman, you know, like, uh, learn the language and he came, sat down at the piano and I had my bass and we just started playing some tunes and, um, that was the, that was the first time I met him. So, and that, it was cool, you know, it was cool. We played like, uh, Chief Blackwater and like single song songs, you know, just some, just some stuff just to. You know, he's just like getting to getting to know me. You know, I, I was I was really young. You know, um, you know, still kind of uh, trying to hear my way through some things, being able to catch on. You know, and um, that was the introduction. So then I gave him my card and my number. Um, and then fast forwarding, uh, maybe like 2005, I saw him um, when I first moved to New York. I saw him at an Anguilla Jazz Festival. Ran into him there, spoke to him, um, gave him my card again, and um, all of a sudden, in 2007, one day I was coming, I was at sitting in the house. Um, I was in grad school. I'm sorry, 2006. I was in grad school. He called me. He said, "Hi, uh, yes, I was Corcoran Holt." And I was like, "Yes." Um, I was like, "Yes, this is Corcoran." He's like, "Hi, this is Kenny Garrett." I'm like, "Oh, snap!" So I started talking to him, and he's like, uh, "Yeah, man, um, I have a tour coming up." Um, and uh, I was just curious if if, uh, if you would be able to do it. And I was like, I was like, oh yeah, sure. He's like, do you? He's like, okay, do you know all of my music? And I was really young, and I was like, I said to him, I said, no, nah. I said, man, I don't know all of your music, but I mean, I can learn it. And he was like, all right, but can you play something for me over the phone? So I like just played, I played something for him over the phone. He's like, all right, great, man. He said, sounds sounds good. I'm gonna call you, I'm gonna call you right back. I'm gonna get in touch with my manager. I'm gonna call you right back. And I was like, wow, okay, cool. So he called me back. And he said, um, hey, uh, yeah, Corcoran, look, man, we got to leave in a couple of days. Um, I'm going to have to go with somebody that knows all of my music. But I'll definitely keep you in mind. And he said, all right, so take care. And I was just like, oh, man. So I was like mad, you know. I was yeah. like, man, I dropped the ball. You know? I really dropped the ball. But the creator has 
always has <laughs> has a master plan. And I don't think I don't know if at that moment, man, if I was ready. I was just getting to New York, you know. I was still in school, and um, you know, I, I was I was a, I was I was a little upset at the fact that Kenny Garrett, you know, somebody who who I've always loved and, and admired, um, you know, as a musician and, and grew up listening to, you know, called me and then I and I and I messed I messed that up. So fast forwarding. Um, a, a good buddy of mine, Benito Gonzalez, piano player. Uh, we came up playing together in D.C. He was he had been playing with Kenny um, for years. So 2011, um, Nat Reeves was was looking to kind of like um, you know going to do some do some other things. He had come back for a minute, and uh, but he was leaving. And so Kenny needed a bass player. So he called me again, and I was like, oh wow. He's like, hey, Corporal Oaks, Kenny Garrett here. And I was like, oh man. I said, hey, how are you doing? And then he's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. He said, look, man, I got this tour coming up, um, West Coast tour, you know, and there's some other things happening, um, interested to see if you, if you'd be interested in doing it. I was like, yeah, of course. He said, do you know all of my music? I said, yeah, I know all of your music. <laughs> so that, that, that time I was like, I said, yeah, I said, yeah, I know all your music. He said, oh, okay, okay, great. He said, um, well, cool, so, um, come on, come on over to the house. So I went over to the house with him and Benito and, um, Marcus Baylor. Um, actually, what well, Ronald Ronald did that first tour, but Marcus was was there, and um, and we played, man, we played, and uh, and I've been with him ever since. So you know, it was kind of just like, you know, it was a second opportunity that came around. That was there was a blessing that you know it was able to happen. You know, thanks to thanks to the creator, but also thanks to Benito, um, dropping my name to uh, to Kenny again and reminding him and. Uh, so I've been with him ever since 2011, man. You know, um, three three records. You know, and been blessed to go all around the world with him repeatedly. So you know, um, and it's been really, really great, man, for for my development, man, as a as a musician. I kind of, I kind of grew up in that band, you know. Yeah. From from the age of like 20, you know, 28 to to 39. You know that's a big that's a big like uh, time period of, of growing up as a man. So you know, so it's been great, man. So yeah, I mean that's that's so. cool to hear how uh, you know even though there was some like disappointment early on, like yeah. the the idea of just playing the long game and and yeah. knowing what you got to do to to be ready for a call like that. It's it's mm-hmm. that's a lot of a lot of pressure, but I'm sure that is encouraging to hear other players who might have been in a similar situation, you know, that kind of thing can pay off down the road. Yeah, it, it really, it really did, man, because I, like, I'm thinking like, if I would have started playing with Kenny in 2006, I would have had opportunities to play with some of the other people I was, I was able to play with, you know, that really prepared me to get me, you know, get me used to like really traveling and, 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 you know, having to learn music, you know, um, and, you know, reading and just, you know, and just being able to kind of be, become more into my understand myself more you know yeah. so by the time i got to him i understood myself more due yeah. to that time so yeah it was good um uh-huh. now in the uh in the new york scene right now are there any up-and-coming players that have got you excited in particular um yeah um i mean there's man there's there's a there's quite a few i mean we're coming out of the, out of a pandemic right now um so you know i haven't really been able to see Everybody, but up to that point, you know, um, Emmanuel, Emmanuel Wilkins, um, yeah, alpha player, yeah, you know, um, I really, I really like his playing, you know, I really like his playing, um, I really appreciate, um, I like, I like India, India Owens playing as well, um, you know, she, uh, she really, she plays with a lot, a lot of heart. I don't know if you know India. Yeah, yeah, I've been um, seeing, her, I've been seeing her stuff online for a while now too. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, I, you know, there's uh, Gifton, Gifton, um, um, trumpeter, young trumpeter, who's a protege of Roy. Um, I really enjoy his playing, as well as uh, Kwaku, Kwaku Sambri. I don't know her. Right. You, you know Kwaku? No. Okay, he he's he um he's actually from Washington D.C. as well, but he he plays uh, in Emmanuel's band, and um, he also does work with. Uh, with Joel, Joel Ross, um, vibraphonist. Yeah, yeah, I know Joel. Uh, yeah, I like I, I like Joel a lot as well. Um, 
you know, um, I mean, there's, 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 there's quite a few um, kind of spacing on, on right now, but I'm still kind of like, even in, in my in my age group, you know, I, I still get inspired by, you know, by by my peers as well, you know, like um, like you know, I still I still love like Des like Desron, <laughs> you know, Desron Douglas, that's a good friend of mine. Um, I know the name. Always, I'm not very familiar. Always love hearing his playing. Um, you know, uh, um, Julius Rodriguez, um, young pianist, um, incredible player, man. Um, do you know you, you you have you heard you familiar with him? No. Julius Rodriguez, yes, great pianist. Check, check him out as well. Um, there's, I mean, there's, man, there's a lot, man. Wallace Roney Jr. is is sounding sounding beautiful, man. Uh, Wally. Okay, you know, yeah, I know Wallace Roney. I, I I'm not uh, familiar with Wallace Roney Jr. Yeah, his, yeah, yeah. His son is great, great drummer. Um, as well as a young young drummer. Um, down in Philadelphia, Makai Boone. Um, Don't know him either. Makai is about, I guess Makai is about 15 years old right now. Man, just Google him, man, and just check check out his, I mean, he's playing, like, with the spirit of, like, somebody, <laughs> you know, like like a somebody who's, who's been here for, for a very, very long time, yeah. you know, uh, you know, as well as, um, Kojo, you know, Kojo Roney. Um, that's uh, Ant, Ant, uh, Antoine's son, Antoine Roney's son, Wallace Roney, Wallace Roney's nephew, great drummer, um, Kojo Roney. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, um, that's one thing New York always has. You know, I'm missing a lot of names, you know. Oh, of course. Um, but there's, there's like a ton. Like, I, I go out and I, I just, you know, I hear people and I'm, in, I'm inspired of, uh, I'm inspired all all the time, you know, and I'm just happy just to see even um, musicians that I came up with on the scene. You know, we got here at the same time, and everybody's just just doing so well, and it's really coming coming to their own, you know, um, such, such as guys like like Theo, you know, Theo Croker and yep. um, Maurice Brown, and you know, um, you know, um, even guys that are a few years older than me. But like um, Marcus Strickland, Rob, you know Robert Glasper, you know. Um, oh yeah, I love those guys. The list just goes on and on, you know. Um, you know, I, I'm just I'm glad that I got here when I did. I mean, 2005 definitely isn't isn't 1965 or uh, <laughs> even 1995. You know what I'm saying? But um, you know, but just to be able to just to be able to see people on on a on more of a regular basis and see their development. And um, watch who they who they are and who they've become. You know, um, it's inspiring, man. Yeah, man. I mean, I know there's, there's too many to name, but it's it's cool to see or cool to just get a little homework and hear a little bit about what's going on, get a few shout outs, you know. Yeah. yeah um. Man. Now, I'm got like one or two more things I wanted to ask quick. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, one thing I was curious about is, you know, uh. I know you you were really into go go, uh, yep. back in DC. You know, obviously you've uh, you've experienced a lot of uh, great jazz players in the city. Um, mm -hmm. Is there another more out there style that has had a big influence on you that people might not guess? Um, yeah, well, um, I I've, I grew up. My first influence um, was West African. West African uh, music. Oh, that's right. You're a djembe player, also. Yes, yeah, so I started on djembe when I was when I was young. Djembe and um, samba and dundu, um, drums out of out of Guinea. So um, um, I was I was heavily um, influenced you know, by like Mamadi Keita, who um, who just passed away uh, a few months ago. Um, so that that definitely that uh, that music. Um, was was really had a lot to do with my my beginnings, uh, and um, kind of even conceptually like how I hear bass, because um, you know I was doing it all at the same time. You know I I was drumming and then started playing bass when I was when I was ten, but I started drumming when I was four. So I kind of like kind of uh, started becoming really really serious with bass when I was like thirteen fourteen, and. Um, and I was playing classical, and then when I started playing jazz, 
you know, I, I remember hearing Reggie Workman play, and I saw that he was doing this percussive thing on the bass, and, and I was like, oh, man. And then it just kind of, like, hit a light bulb, and I was like, man, I can kind of, like, try to experiment with doing some of these rhythms from drumming, you know, on the bass and kind of, like, bringing it, bringing it all together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so definitely West African music. Um, as you mentioned, definitely go-go music was uh, huge, huge for me. I was just on Instagram um, in, a, in a chat last night um, talking about talking about uh, the his, history of go-go and um, how it's, you know, how you know, there's a lot of bass players that come from, from D.C. in my generation, um, such as Ben Williams and uh, Amin Salim, Eric Wheeler, um, before us, Michelle and Deggio, Shello. You know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of Butch, Butch Warren. Um, you know, there's a lot. There's a big, big history of bass. Yeah. And um, as far as for us, you know, Gogo was like, Gogo was a, was, is, is still remains a big, a big thing to me. I still listen to it like every day. Um, of course, hip hop. <laughs> you know, yeah. I grew up, you know, I'm born in the 80s. You know, I grew up in the 90s, so of course, hip hop, um, gospel music, um, you know, uh, world, you know, world music as well. You know, world music. I, I check out a lot of that. So, I, you know, I come across things, man. I come across things. So um, every every day, you know, every day, I'm always listening, trying to trying to listen to find to seek new sounds and, and uh, new inspiration. You know, to help help me as a musician so um yeah it's I'm cool it's, open. it's cool to hear you know just what where people come from because yeah. every guest i have on has a different a little bit of a different take mm -hmm. on things a little bit of a different background not, not a lot yeah. of djembe players on my right. show <laughs> <laughs> right 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 um yeah. but uh yeah. the the other thing i want to touch on which I, I love to touch on with uh guests is uh Comedy. I'm a huge stand-up comedy nerd. Do you do you have a particular favorite stand-up? Um, yeah, man. Um, <laughs> I, I I I'll tell you I tell you some a couple of my favorites. Um, being from being from DC, you know we we have uh, we have a lot we have some 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 diehard you know hit there's some heavy hitters that come yep. out of DC. So um, I mean I, I don't even have to mention Dave. Yep. You know, Dave Chappelle, but <laughs> Um, I'll start with him. I'll start with him first. Um, really, you know, Dave Chappelle went to the, we went to the same high school as me. You know, oh, okay. School of Arts, so uh, he went to Duke Ellington School of Arts. He was there, of course, before me, but uh, he's best friends with uh, with uh, another friend of mine named named Brian Settles, who's a, who's a great tenor player, um, who who uh, who was in New York for a long time, and they actually came to New York at the same time. So I, I love. Uh, I love Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle is a genius. Yeah, he's my favorite. Um, man. He's, he's yeah, amazing. he's my favorite. He, he's, he's my favorite as well. Um, my favorite Dave stand-up, though, my favorite Dave stand-up is the one live in D.C. Um, at the Lincoln Theater. Is it is it Killing Them Softly? Yeah, um, yeah. Yo, know, that and that's a while ago. That's like two thousand and like two or. Yeah, like, that's one of my favorites. He was at home, and you know, like DC just like embraced him. And he was just, and you know, he was going, he was going off, you know. And but I love what Dave has um, evolved into, you know. He I, he he has been able to evolve as a comedian, which is which is awesome. So um, I know he's, you know, he's, he's rubbed a lot of people, a lot of you know, the certain communities the wrong way. But we, you know, and I, you know, I don't really need to talk about that. But I, I love Dave Chappelle. I also, um, I love Martin, Martin Lawrence. Yeah. Um, the early, early Martin. Um, man, what was it, man? Why, it's still, it's still morning time, man. I, You're good. I haven't finished my coffee. You know, yet, but, uh, I would like to say about Chappelle. Before we go, I just want to say about Chappelle. I mean, yeah, he he's rubbed people the wrong way, but as a fan of his and as a listener for a long time, I you know I, I do think there is love underneath the jokes, and you know even oh, I, yeah. I I respect people being offended, but oh, yeah. I I don't you know as a fan, there's no oh, there's no hate in the enjoyment of of his no, humor, no. and I and I think no, that below no, it all, no. there's a lot of love. 
And, and he explained he explained that he explained that in the last uh, in the last stand up. Yeah. That has caused so much controversy. He explained that, man. He he's a comedian, man. He's a comedian, and that's that's part that's part of the art. Yeah. That's part of the art. People are know? gonna get offended. So, that's cool, but it's. No, he is he is a he is you know he is a, a I don't know him like personally, but I feel like I do because two of my closest friends are his. Are two of his closest friends. Yeah. So like you know, so I feel like I do. So you know, um, and you know, it, it's his his story and his journey is is so similar to in certain ways. Um, I mean, I'm no Dave Chappelle at all, but you know, he came from he came from the same place I came from. Yeah. And he came to New York when he was young, and he was out here, and he was grinding, and but he look at him now, man. Look at him now, man. It's 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 a, it's amazing to see. As well as Martin Lawrence. You know, Martin Lawrence is from right outside of DC and Landover, Maryland. Um, you know, like uh the fir- Martin's first stand up, that's one of my that's that that's one of my it's hilarious. You know the one where you have like a, um man, what's it called, man? Not run tell that, but um the very the very first Stand up before he started having all of his issues, you know, right, right before the Martin Show came out. But I have, I haven't seen his full specials. I've only seen clips of Martin. And honestly, that's that's kind of a, a shame as a comedy mm. fan. I gotta, mm. I gotta dig deeper on him. Gotta see that, and of course Richard Pryor. Oh, of course. I know that was like, man, Richard Pryor. You know, there, there would be no Dave Chappelle without Richard Pryor. Yeah. Um, you know, those are. I think, and, and you know, Chris Tucker definitely had a moment of when he first hit the scene. He was hilarious. Um, I mean, I, I just love, I love comedy. Bernie Mac, you know, yeah. um, those are like, you know, these are like my, you know, it's kind of like my, my, my fives, you know, Dave, Richard, Martin, Bernie Mac. Um, uh, who, who else did I just say? Uh, I said somebody else too. Chris Tucker. At that one point, even though he didn't have a lot of stand-ups, he kind of went right into movies, but he, just, he was just funny back then. Yeah. You know, um, Red Fox, you know, um, you can go you can go all the way back, you yeah. know, but um, that's the beautiful thing about comedy and music, man. They go they go hand in hand, you know. One person inspires the next generation, then the next generation brings something different, and that's, that's the artistry, you know, that's the artistry of it all. Yeah, well, like I said, I love to hear where everyone kind of comes from and what they've been influenced mm-hmm. by. And like I said, I'm a big fan of, of stand-up, even as a musician. Mm-hmm. It's all they are is just beautiful stuff. Me too, man. Me too. Um, but uh, listen, man, it's it's been great talking to you. This has really been a pleasure. I really appreciate you coming on. I can't wait to oh, hear the new album. Yeah, uh, man, my, my pleasure, man. And and uh, thank, man, thank you for reaching out man thanks for reaching out man and um glad that we got to glad that we got to rap and um yeah man you know any anytime anytime you know i'm all i'm around man so all right well like i said i'm just i'm just getting down to the city i just got a spot in brooklyn so hopefully i'll catch a show soon um and uh come by friday man friday Friday, i gotta get friday but (laughs) up up, upstate i'm upstate yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. 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 Cool. But cool. All right. I'm, I'm 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 making it down more. I, most of my work is still upstate, but I'm I'm trying to get out the stuff down when I'm down in the city, and uh, yeah. um. But you know, I'll find my time. But uh, before you go, tell the tell the people what else they should be keeping an eye out for and where they should be w- watching out for you. Yeah. Um. Well, just uh, I, I guess I'm gonna be Friday. I'm gonna be with my with my band. Um. In the village, um, at, at Cellar Dog, on uh, that uh, right on Seventh Avenue. So I'll be with my quintet down there. Um, you know, uh, of course, I'm still. I'm about to go out, go out to Europe um, with Kenny Garrett, and then we're gonna be doing some some more uh, touring, a lot of touring, coming up. Still pushing his record sounds from the ancestors. Um, I'm about to do a recording with um, Steve Teray. Um, on Smoke Sessions, uh, it's called his, his next uh, next generation band. He's kind of mixing a few different generations together. Um, so that that project coming up, and then um, I'll be releasing. You know, working on my project. So hopefully I'll I have that to 
to you in the springtime. And, uh, yeah, man, um, you can just follow me. You know, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Instagram, Corcoran Hope, you know, as, as well as uh, Facebook, Twitter, and CorcoranHope.com, you know, and I'm, all, I'm around. So, I'm, you know, I'm always doing something. So, you know, just, um, yeah, I'm, <laughs> you can find me. I'm not hard to find. All right, I'm awesome. Well, yeah. thank you again, Corcoran. Thanks, it was man. great talking to you. All man. right. You too, brother. Take care.